So when I was in the seventh or eighth grade, um, I think eighth grade actually, I remember that one of my teachers had a puzzle out for any of us to work on when we finished our tests early or anything like that. And this puzzle was so hard that we never finished it. We made a tiny bit of progress and then it just got put away. We never finished it. And about a year ago, I just suddenly remembered this and it has been haunting me trying to figure out what this puzzle was. So here's everything that I could remember about it. Based on when I was in middle school, it would have had to come out in 2003 or earlier. I was like 90% sure it was a shaped puzzle and it was in the shape of the United States. I know that there were not a lot of big distinct sections of color because we couldn't do a lot of sorting. So it was kind of the same texture throughout. And I knew that it was a random cut because we had a lot of false edges and so we couldn't make the complete edge. And I remembered that one part of the edge was yellow because that was the only part that we made any real progress on. But I didn't know the brand, the name, the piece count. It was so hard to Google. I swear I have looked at every single puzzle shaped like the United States that has ever been made. But then one day when I was on Worth Point researching a totally different puzzle, suddenly it popped up and I was, I instantly knew. I was like, that's the puzzle. I finally found it. So I went onto eBay and I got one. <laughs> So now I can try the puzzle that defeated me when I was in the eighth grade. Okay, so here is the puzzle. It's called From Sea to Shining Sea. It came out in 2002, so perfectly fits with our timeline. And sure enough, it is in the shape of the United States. We have this yellow section down here, which I remember working on in 2002 and the texture across the entire thing is very similar so you can't do a whole lot of sorting and when i found this puzzle on worth point i made sure to click through to find a photo of the completed puzzle and sure enough there are false edges in there so i did it i found the puzzle that has been haunting me <laughs> But before I get started on this, I want to take a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. Today I am talking all about school, so I thought it was perfect that today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. Whether you're looking to learn basic algebra or move on to calculus or learn more advanced topics like data science and neural networks, Brilliant has thousands of lessons to choose from. I remember when I was in high school, calculus was so easy for me, but I just could not get my head around statistics. I wish I had had interactive lessons like these. It would have made it so much easier to learn. It's honestly almost like playing a game, except that you're learning at the same time. Brilliant is a great tool for busy people and Honestly, like who isn't busy these days? So whether you are still in school and you need some extra help, or you just want to keep learning for fun, Brilliant is the place to do it. You can try Brilliant for free for 30 days. We love things that are free by going to brilliant.org slash Karen Puzzles. And I'll also have that link down in the description. And that's not it. The first 200 people who sign up using my link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. But now let's get back to the puzzle.
Oh man, just looking at the texture of the illustration that's on these pieces is giving me flashbacks to 20 years ago. So what is my strategy? Um, I think that just like in 2002, I'm going to start by separating out all of these yellow pieces. Try to get this done. There's a little over here, a little up there. Also, these rivers. I seem to remember back then we were trying to separate all those pieces and get those put together, but you know, for children who couldn't work on it for that long at a time. Um, we didn't make a lot of progress, but this time I think I can actually finish the rivers. There are also just a lot of very distinct landmarks that I think I can just keep referring to the box and sort of getting those on the table in the general position where they're going to go, and eventually they'll all start to connect. As I said, there are false edges in here, so I'm not going to be able to do the entire outline up front, although some of the edges are pretty obvious, like I'm pretty sure that's a real edge. And I actually have a funny story about the edges, which I will tell you all in a sec, but first I'm going to try to make a little progress on the sorting. Okay, I feel so validated because even now, this is such a difficult puzzle. So I'm an hour and seven minutes into it, and this is all of the progress that I've made. Although I just um, spotted a piece. So, oh no, wait, I didn't spot a piece. It doesn't go there. Does it go here? No, it doesn't go there. Does it go here? No. Okay, now you see why this puzzle is so difficult. Like, there are no clear dividers. Everything just kind of blends into each other. The rivers help, but um, everything else is just these little sections of colors all just blending right into each other. Um, I was able to pull out all of the Vegas imagery as well as the Hollywood imagery, but I have been consulting the box quite a lot to know what order everything is going to go in. And as you can see, there are some really wacky shaped pieces in here, so you can't just to pull the entire edge, like there's a lot of false edges, like here, um, right in the middle of this puzzle. So I want to give 11 year old me some grace, you know, because not only is this a difficult puzzle, but there were a bunch of things just fully working against us when we were trying to solve it in the eighth grade. Number one, um, you saw how I started by literally just flipping everything over, spreading it all out. Well, in the eighth grade classroom, uh, this was set up basically on a counter against the wall. So it wasn't on a table, it was on a space. I'm trying to think, I don't know, maybe three feet, if that wide, by maybe about two feet tall. So you really couldn't spread everything out. And you had to be there standing the entire time. You couldn't like sit down and get comfortable and really dig into it. Plus there were never like huge blocks of time where we could work on this. As I said, it would be available like after you finish a test, maybe during recess for like half an hour, but <laughs> it's way different than being able to sit here all day long, not having to be in school. <laughs> and then also um, when you do puzzles with other people, 
you know, pieces get moved around. You can't make your little piles because someone else is going to come in and just mess the whole thing up. So given how many pieces there are that it's like a full thousand piece puzzle and the high level of difficulty, I'm kind of like, it's no wonder we never finished it. So what am I working on next now that I have almost all of these yellow pieces in place? Well, I just started grabbing this kind of green scribbling on top of a yellow background. So I've been able to get a bunch of those in place. This one, I actually think I just spotted. Yes, I got that connected. And then the rest of this puzzle is so hard because there are so many mountains, so many trees. Why does this country have so many mountains and trees? <laughs> Okay, I just dropped a piece. I don't even know where it went, but I reached down to pick it up and I found this piece from my last video that I thought was missing. Oh no! Okay, um, I'll put that over here and now I have to find a piece that I actually did drop this time. Oh my God, it's all the way up there. Oh, I got it. All right, well, I guess the eBay seller from that last video um, was in fact only missing that one piece and not both of them. Um, okay, so I took a little bit of a longer break there than I anticipated. So I finished uh, the last time lapse at about 1 p.m. and I decided to stop for lunch. And then the couch was so comfy that I just kind of stayed there. <laughs> I had another puzzle going just for fun out in the living room. So I ended up just turning on Gilmore Girls and finishing that puzzle. So now it is 5.30 p.m. Um, I usually don't film this late, but I had a little bit of a second wind and I wanted to get back to this puzzle, get a little bit more done tonight. My original goal was to see if I could finish it in one day. I kind of feel like that's not gonna happen. I still have all of these pieces left, but you know, who knows? Maybe I'll just work all through the night. Also, this is not the correct time. I accidentally left the timer running while I was eating lunch. And then when I came back in here to like decide if I wanted to start filming again, I noticed it was still running. So I had to look at the timestamps and I'm up to three hours and 20 minutes so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. And then whatever I end up with on here, I just have to add 322, 322 what I have on here, not 322. You guys get it. So I'm just gonna start it again because I'm gonna keep working on this while I tell you guys my most vivid memory from working on this puzzle 20 years ago. So me and this other girl were working on this yellow edge. Like I said, that's really the only part that we made any real progress on. And as I said, we couldn't sort out all of the different um, edge pieces because there are false edges inside the puzzle. But when you look at them, you can sort of tell like what's a real edge and what's a false edge. Like if it's, if the picture is cut off right in the middle, it's probably a false edge. So we had a whole pile of edges and uh, this girl would be like handing them to me and I would take a look and I would be like, 
real edge. Okay, this one's a false edge. Okay, this one's a real edge. And we would try to sort them out like that. I have no idea how accurate I was. That doesn't really matter to the story. But the teacher who had set up this puzzle came over and saw what we were doing. And in my mind, this was very condescending. He walked over and he was like, yeah, you know, usually when you do jigsaw puzzles, you can separate out the edge and that's where you're gonna wanna start. But since this one has false edges, we can't separate out the edge. And I don't think I really said anything, but I vividly remember in my mind being like, yeah, I know that. Obviously, I do jigsaw puzzles all the time. You don't have to tell me that. I know that you usually start with the edge. <laughs> I can be uh, a little bit of a brat in my internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. That's the story. I'm going to get back to the puzzle. I think... Okay, here's what I think I have to do. You can see that I have a handful of smaller sections going that don't connect to this main guy. So I think I'm gonna push all of the pieces off to the side, get all of these generally in place, and then just look in here and try to sort of match up where more of these pieces are gonna go, get them generally in place, and then hopefully I can start connecting more of them. Because this, this already has been very slow going. time for day two. Let's see if I can finish it today. For some reason, I have just been so resistant to sorting by shape. I guess I felt like that would be a little bit of a cop out or make it too easy. But this puzzle is difficult enough that I think that's just what I have to do today. I have been looking for this piece forever. I've been looking for that piece. I've been looking for that piece. So it's just going to be a lot easier to find these if I can, you know, eliminate a lot of these pieces by sorting by shape. So I'm at two hours and 33 minutes on here, plus the 320 from uh, when I reset the timer. So that is five hours and 50 minutes. Oh, that's almost six hours. Oh my gosh, almost six hours. And I'm like maybe halfway done. <laughs> so here's a look at where we are. You can see that when I sorted out all of these pieces, I found some more edge pieces and I was able to finally get that top edge connected. So you can really see the Western part of the United States taking shape. Uh, New England and the East Coast is still kind of a mess. So here's how I did the sorting. Um, over here on this side, I have all of the regular puzzle piece shapes. 
So you can see it's just all of the different standard types of shapes that you would expect in a puzzle. And I know for sure that all of these cannot be edge pieces. Then over here on this side, I have all of the wacky shapes. So up here, I have the little uh, pieces with a straight edge here on the bottom. And some of these might be edge pieces, some of them might not. And then down here, I just have the miscellaneous category. Um, up here were all of the pieces that had been in the center of the puzzle because they had textures that I was looking for or that seemed to match what I was already working on. I guess I should just sort these out into the different shapes. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Oh, and then up here I have some more that I was fairly sure could be edge pieces, although some of them probably aren't. And then up here I have all of the end caps, so little pieces like this that just form these wacky borders of our country. So I definitely think I'm in good shape to move forward, but before I do, I have one more puzzle middle school story that I wanted to share. So when I was in the eighth grade, there would be a classroom set up for kids to go to before school started, if they had to get dropped off early. Um, my mom worked at the school, so I would always be there early. So I would usually hang out there in the mornings. I remember they always had a tiny TV playing Saved by the Bell reruns, literally every single day. But I was never there for Saved by the Bell. Uh, sometimes they had a jigsaw puzzle going. And there was this one day where I walk into the classroom and a bunch of kids are standing around this puzzle of like a bunny or something. I don't really remember. They were almost done. I think they only had maybe like 30 pieces left. But there was one spot where they couldn't find the piece that went there. So I walk in and look over at it and they're like, we're looking for this piece. We swear it is not here. We cannot find it. So I just sort of take in the scene. I look at the spot. I look at all the pieces that are left. And then silently, I just reach over, pluck up one single piece and put it in place. And it fits. First try, first time, I got it. <laughs> and everyone was so impressed. And I swear that was like the coolest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> it has all been downhill from there. <laughs> When I tell you, I feel so vindicated. If you uh, exclude all of the solid colored puzzles I've done, this is one of the hardest puzzles I've done on this channel that has some kind of picture on it. And you wouldn't think it would be that hard, but for some reason, I don't know. It's just like the different sections are so little that it's just impossible to see what you're looking at on the pieces. Oh my gosh, this has been a lot and I was not expecting it to be this hard. <laughs> like literally, how did my teacher in middle school think a bunch of middle schoolers were ever going to solve this? <laughs> so my time just passed six hours here on this timer, but you have to remember the three hours from when I reset it. So that is over nine hours so far. So here's where I'm at. You can see I have almost the entire border done, except for this little bit up here. 
I got all of New England done with all of these funky pieces. I was gonna say that I was like convinced I was missing this piece. I've been looking for it forever, but uh, I actually just found it. So there we go. The entire West Coast or Western side of this country is done. So I really just have two big sections left right here. I think at this point, it'll probably only be another hour, two hours, but I am so exhausted. <laughs> This puzzle just takes everything out of me. So I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. Okay, day three of this 1000 piece puzzle. I really did not think this was gonna take this long, but I am pretty confident that I will finish it today. Okay, the first piece I wanna find is Elvis's mouth. <laughs> I think I see it. Does anyone else see it? It's this one. It's this one. I'm sure it's this one. It is that one. Well, I did it! After 20 years, I finally solved this puzzle. So my time on the timer was six hours, 45 minutes, and 27 seconds. But remember that I had to reset the timer partway through. So my total time was actually 10 hours, five minutes, and 27 seconds. That is wild for a 1000 piece puzzle. And one that really doesn't have any sort of crazy twist to it. It's just a regular puzzle. And that was with the ideal scenario to solve a puzzle. Like I have great lighting. I have space to spread out. I don't have anyone messing with my organization. And it still took me that long. I do wonder if I had gone with that original strategy of trying to do all the rivers up front, if maybe that would have made it go faster. There are just so many river pieces that I ended up just sort of taking it section by section and texture by texture. So I just want to point out one more thing that made doing especially New England a lot harder. So when you cut out a puzzle, it's never in the exact same spot on the cardboard. You have a little bit of tolerance. So you can see here on the box, like this hook in Massachusetts, it has these uh, sailboats on it. But on my puzzle, it's shifted enough that I just don't even have those sailboats at all. So when I'm looking at this piece and I'm comparing it to the puzzle, you know, it doesn't look like it doesn't have the same picture on it, even though it's basically the same shape. You can see here they have a complete lobster, whereas mine is like mostly cut off. I have a lot more green up here. 
So <laughs> trying to compare the actual pieces to the picture that is on the box was definitely tricky. Hi guys, editing Karen here. So while I've been editing this video, I suddenly remembered that this same teacher when I was in the fifth grade would draw all of these word puzzles on the whiteboard of the classroom every single morning before school. And those of us who got there early would all work on them together. Um, when we solved each one, we would end up with a word for the day and we would have this whole list of words. And then after like a month of these puzzles, we would get one big like meta puzzle that used all of the words we found. And that would take us on like a scavenger hunt through the classroom to find a prize. It was amazing. And this teacher did not have to do that. Like this was just an extra thing that he decided to do. Clearly he loved puzzles. So even though I did tell that story earlier in the video about um, one comment that I found unnecessary, he was a really great teacher. So I actually brought a couple more examples of puzzles I wanted to show as bad and good examples of puzzles to leave out for a group of random people to all work on together. So this sticker puzzle from Lay Puzz, this is very similar to the one I just did in that you have so many little tiny sections and you can't do a lot of sorting up front. It's just a very similar texture all throughout the puzzle. On the other hand, when you have puzzles like this that have a lot of color separation, it's way easier to do the sorting up front and then you can just do it section by section and you're gonna make a lot more progress way faster. And then this one is like the easiest one of all because you have these very distinct lines, you have a lot of color separation. I literally did this one in like, two and a half, maybe three hours. So if you have this one out for people to work on, um, it will get solved. But I'm just so happy that I found the puzzle, that I was able to get one on eBay. Let me know in the comments, um, have you ever done this puzzle? Have you ever done a puzzle with a group of people and did you guys manage to finish it? Your code word for the comments will be America. I think that's all I've got for you today. So thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one.